All right, welcome back. We're doing, well, we're doing what we're doing, more fire in the lake. As always, you know, we um, started off by doing a little review, but also we need to hit up a potential error. So someone on uh, Board Game Geek, I am now spacing on the name. Let's take a look. I think I actually pulled it up. Good old Harry K here said, one thing he noticed is that when I'm governing, I should transfer patronage from aid. Oops, that's a big one. Luckily, he has a good attitude with it, right? It's just a game we can roll with it. We can definitely roll with it, but we can also definitely try to fix it. Uh, as I noted here, I think I can reduce aid by eight and lower resources by six because I think I've governed three times total, twice involving Hue in another city and once with just the other cities. I can't remember if I did this in the beginning. I might have probably done the first one correctly, but let's just assume I didn't. And so we're going to reduce aid by eight and lower resources by six. That probably would have changed some of our actions. Not a ton, honestly, because the U.S. has been trying to build aid. And uh, so I don't think that would have been like that big a deal. So this will go down to six, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. And then we're going to lower resources. Wait, did I say by eight? Yeah, and then we'll lower resources by six. That actually helps, hurts us a lot more than anything else. Now, remember, again, we, if the U.S., we can't spend past our econ. So actually, the U.S. won't be able to do anything with Arvin actions right now because we can't go past the econ here. So we're going to try to be more about it. This does mean that the Arvin needs to definitely focus on aid. And when you know it, our first event here is definitely something that can help out. So we have election, clean vote. Oh, by the way, you should look at, it's been a minute, but if you've been watching the series, it's been like maybe 15 seconds. For me, it's been a couple of days. Arvin and the NBA are going to go first. Okie dokie. And also, I'd like to have all these move. I'm just a sucker for the movement trails. It drives me crazy. Where is it? Where is it? Mark, all pieces move. One of those is that. No. Oh, there it is. Boom. Okay. Sorry, just a little, little pet peeve. All right, election. Three passive support spaces to active support and aid plus 10. So there's not a ton of passive places, but we do have some cities at passive, which could be really helpful because that lets us actually govern <laughs> again. It does kind of boost the US, but I'm actually okay with that. Unfortunately, the cities I'd like to boost, which is Hue and Da Nang and Kantum, are not at passive. They are just totally neutral, which is going to be a long-term problem. We need to kind of start to think about, oh man, this is going to be tough because our aid is so low and we don't have a ton of resources to begin with. So I think the Arvin is going to have to take this event. It's just too good. We need the aid a lot and we could get the free passive boost, which we kind of desperately need as well in the cities. I feel like that's really important in the cities for Arvin. So Arvin's going to take the event. We will boost our aid by 10, back up to 16. See, it's one of those things where if I hadn't caught that error, I probably wouldn't have taken that event because my aid was already doing fairly well and I wasn't super worried about it. But now that I realize I've been governing incorrectly, yeah, I mean, not totally incorrectly. I've been adding the patronage correctly. I just haven't been subtracting the aid from it, which just to take a minute here, I know I want to keep the game flowing, but this is essentially thematically how it works is that the Arvin government is diverting the aid it gets from international assistance and it's putting it into its patronage networks it's, and uh, instead of like using that aid for like what it's intended to be done. It's kind of diverting the money flowing it away. So that kind of makes sense thematically if you think about it. That is what they're trying to do is build up their own little network of support, not necessarily doing what other people want them to do, but what they want to do with the money. To increase support, I think we're going to do that in all the cities. Unfortunately, all the cities that... that can use it, don't really need it. Uh, I'm not interested in getting the two population places up because I don't want to help the US too much. So I think we'll just do this. So adjust it there to active, to active, and we'll do that to active. Yeah, because everywhere else is like active or passive opposed. And unfortunately, these cities, man, it'd be super great if these were passive, but they're not. Okay, on to the NBA. They can do an op and add special. All right, what do they want to do here? They have some cubes here. Maybe they'd like to start marching in country. They could start rallying and putting bases up. And they actually have a fair amount of money to play with. So that's pretty good. What do we want to do here? Let's take a look at the old sheets. Since we have an op special, we could infiltrate things again, which is not bad. Um, it does let us replace NVA guerrillas with troops can be helpful. Bombard would be nice. We could ambush. So we could try to march and ambush somewhere and try to start just taking out pieces. Um, don't know if we really want to do that necessarily. I do want to get another base here in Cambodia eventually. We might rally and bombard. Would that be smart? 
Unfortunately, there's all these cubes here, but I don't have any more troops next to this, so I can't keep bombarding that. There's not enough spaces here to bombard cubes, unfortunately, because I moved all my cubes in here. Kind of got a little aggressive, right? But that's kind of what I want to do. I want to be able to start doing that. I could build a base in country. Building a base in country would be nice. And rallying in Kuang Tree could be good, because that would let us, like, start putting gorillas here and becoming a nuisance in Kuang, in Kuang Ten. Not Kuang Tree, Kuang Ten. And I could do that here as well. We can't bombard. So unfortunately, I can't really bombard. I would like to, because we only have two cubes there. And I would like to start knocking more cubes out. But there's not enough pieces here for me to target um, with a bombard. If I was in Kuang, Kuang, Kuang Tree, this is Kuang Tree, right? Yeah, if I was in Kuang Tree, I could actually target Hui. But that's not going to happen. Hmm. Hmm. I could march in ambush. That is always something I can do. I can march under the locks for free. And that and that's pretty hot. So I can march another guy here and then and then ambush, which would be pretty pretty dope actually. And I can actually march these guys out into Tainan and grab more territory, which I think is not terrible. But there's only six here, so they are totally vulnerable to an airstrike. But again, I don't think that's a terrible idea. Ah, yeah, I might march in ambush because I really do want to start getting rid of more cubes. I do think that's a huge thing for them. So we're kind of in a good position right now. I can march as many spaces as I want. It's one resource per non-lock. And I can move troops and guerrillas to adjacent if it's a locker support. We all know about that, the exceeding the three rule. I've known that for that's pretty much a standard thing in coin games. And activate NBA guerrillas. We don't have to worry about that. And we if it's a Laos or Cambodia, we can march again. That's something I can't kind of forget, is that it's easier for us to march. Like, you can move two spaces, essentially, in Laos and Cambodia. And that's actually, like, really nice, right? If you have a piece here, you can go here and then here. But it would cost you two resources. You'd be like, one, two, right? So it's a lot of money, but you can get double movement. That's, that's can, That can be huge. Yeah, we'll go ahead and march. Let's go ahead and march. Let's march into Tainan. Uh, we could march into Kenfong, but there's a bunch of pieces here. And I'd rather get into the jungle because it's just going to... Well, it doesn't really matter. These things don't get activated by sweeps. So, But there's not a ton of uh, U.S. troops down here. And I like that idea. So we'll bring these guys here. Kind of putting the pressure on the old U.S. Uh, that costs us a resource. We are going to march some gorillas onto these locks. So I think we're going to march a gorilla out here. On old route nine this is actually going to give us more pieces than they have there so it's going to actually sabotage that route next time and that's pretty hot and then i think we'll take a gorilla from here and we'll march it under route one yeah i think that's exactly what we're going to do and we're going to ambush so with ambushing, so that was free. Those are free movements because we moved into locks, right? Ambushes. Attack on the move or ensure success. March or attack op. We did that. And one or two spaces where an NVA gorilla who marched or is about to attack is underground. Okay. So they did march the underground. We can activate that gorilla, remove one enemy, no roll, and the NVA, and no NVA. And if we're on a lock, target adjacent piece of desired. So we've done this before, but I just want to review again because you know I've been goofing some of the things, so it's always good to review. So we'll go active. And we remove one in an adjacent space because we are uh, ambushing. So I think I'm going to ambush in Hue. Yeah, we're going to do that. Send to casualties. And we'll ambush in Da Nang. Send to casualties. That way, Da Nang now is just totally in coin, is not coin control at all, right? It wasn't before, but now there's absolutely nobody in Da Nang. So that's actually kind of huge for our old VC pals. That could be really good for us. Puts more pressure on the. Uh, coin factions to actually try to get some control over here in the north. They're not, not looking so strong right now. Not looking great. So I could have passed, honestly, as the NBA and gotten this. What does this do? Oh yeah, that's a pretty terrible one. But see, I think that actually won't hurt us at all. Quezon, because select a space with U.S. troops, remove 10 NBA troops within one space of it. And I just got rid of the guy in Da Nang. <laughs> I guess he could do this, right? And I guess he could dig out 10 troops there. That would be kind of annoying. Wait, is this it? Oh, it's like a U.S. base with U.S. troops. Oh, okay. Well, that's super great because it's this, this one and there's no there's no pieces around it to remove. So that's actually huge. So that actually won't benefit the U.S. at all. So that's pretty good. That was a good good march in doing all that good stuff. All right. Uh, in faction play. Apparently, I'm told if I just draw a card, this will all do everything. So we'll discard that. 
pranks. We're done with the election. We're going to draw a card. Let's see if it actually did this. I was told it would do this. It did not do this. That's okay. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. I'm not too worried about it. Manually moving is not hard. All right, the US is up, and we do have a US event in the next one that's a, a momentum. So maybe something to think about was this one. This commitment, all troop casualties available. Oh, that's that could be really good for us. We wouldn't lose them. That could be really nice. I mean, they haven't done a ton of damage, but they could. Oh, but there's just so much going on. I don't know if we can afford to pass and let um and let VC just like have have whatever they want. So what's Kason's? We saw Kason's unshaded event. The shaded one is up to three troops in one space of the NBA to casualties. Oh, that's not great. Actually, I don't think there's a space where they they coexist. Actually, that's not terrible. And the US stays ineligible through the next card. Now that would be bad. So we really can't pass because if we pass, then the VC might just take that event anyway. And keep them ineligible so they couldn't even use that event now, i don't know if the vc would necessarily want to do that they do have four resources they're probably not looking to like do a ton of action they probably want to tax really bad they probably want to tax really bad that's probably what they want to do yeah i think that's exactly what they want to do unfortunately they don't control this anymore that was a great taxable place thank you nba so the u.s is probably gonna to have to do something it can't take the event it doesn't really want to give and see, this is, this is a good time to kind of put it, the screws to the VC because the next event, the VC is last. So I don't mind if I give them like just a limited op because then they can't do anything, right? And I could, and the event is not great for us. I don't want to give them access to the event and I don't want to take the event. So the US is going to definitely have to do an op only, no special activity. Not totally ideal for the US. They definitely would like to get more of their airlift capability or maybe airstrike going because now they have a ton of... Um, uh, NVA in, in country, right? It's not great. We also might want to do an advise, geez, because we just need to keep advising, building up, building up that aid. So we can't use any Arvin stuff. We can't pacify. We have no money to spend. Okay, we don't want to go to patrol. We might have to sweep. Might have to start sweeping. I think is what we're gonna have to do. Maybe training just does not help us very much right now. We could train in Saigon and train and trade three patronage for resources, which is probably a good idea. They need resources terribly, but I don't know if I want to blow a train up just on that. And unfortunately, we've got way too much activity going on. Uh, I think we're going to have to sweep. So we can move U.S. troops of desire onto adjacent free locks and then into adjacent spaces. So we don't. Have, there's a ton of locks that have insurgents on it, unfortunately. We need to start cleaning that up. But we can still go into adjacent spaces, activate one gorilla per U.S. troop, or irregular there or in the jungle one for every two. So man, we've got we gotta get some pieces out here. I really don't want to just show up and attain in with just four cubes. That feels not like a lot. And I think how good is the I mean the NVA is not like great at attacking. What do they do? Remove one enemy troop per two NVA troops or activate all NVA gorillas to roll. Yeah, we're not gonna worry about the gorillas. Remove one attacker per U.S. troop or base removed. So they would actually take a lot of casualties, but they could inflict a lot of casualties here. Like if I moved these four cubes in, detain in, and then they were able to attack first, that could be bad for us because they could get rid of three of those cubes, and that would be bad. That would be bad. Anywhere I go, it's going to be bad. This is kind of why I'd like to do an off and special because you really just want to... Oh, this is going to be annoying. This is so many cubes. I really do need like an airstrike very badly help come thin out the numbers we have to sweep we have to get in the game so let's try to clean up Kwong tree here i think this is going to be a nasty little place so how many of these guys do they have here gemini three four five okay luckily it's the mountains but we are going to need tons of firepower to get these people dealt with so we're just going to move every cube down here i'm going to do it really slowly one at a time because that seems like a fun thing to do All right, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys here. We're going to activate all these guys. Is there any else I want to sweep? Unfortunately, I lost this guy in Denang. That's so bad. I don't know how we're going to... This is not looking great. This is looking pretty, pretty bad. Um, I guess I could sweep from Pleiku into Kwong Duck. That would get me a little closer to Tain In. That's probably a good idea. 
So let's do that. We'll bring those guys down here. I could bring a lot. I really do need my airlift to start really moving guys around. Can I move this guy? That could be huge. Can I move him? Troops. Hmm. Nope, 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 nope. So that's not a troop cube. We would need to airlift, I think. Yeah, airlift lets us move irregulars and rangers. These are like irregulars. These aren't. These are like our little special forces, but they're people that we've trained. Um, they're like mountain gorillas or the Montanards. I forget their name. I'm totally butchering that, I think. But uh, we need to airlift them around. They don't just get to move on their own. All right, so we got six here. We can definitely activate all these guys because it's two for one in the jungle to sweep, right? All right, and that costs us nothing because we're the U.S. and we have infinite resources, even though we can't seem to handle this country very well. Okay, do I want to sweep out of Saigon? Hmm. Kind of? Not terribly so, though. I kind of want to make sure Saigon doesn't just get overrun <laughs> with a bunch of guys. Uh, could go into Ken Fong and sweep there. That seems like a not terrible idea, too. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right. Let's just get as many people active as we can. <laughs> I think that's what that's the safest move. And I'm not going to move into Bintui because I, you know, I probably could have moved the four guys in here and act. No, I've only been able to activate two. So we got to move slowly and methodically here. And this space is more valuable. It's got two bases in it. Okay. That's all I can do. That's all I can do, right? Because all I have is a special activity. So that's cool. VC can do a limited op. They don't really want to pass. I mean, they kind of do want to pass to get a resource maybe, but they would just go last year, and that doesn't seem very great at all. But they only have four resources, and we are now being threatened in a couple of spaces. Not here, necessarily. Um, Da Nang looks really dope. I could build a base up there, and that could be kind of helpful because I don't know when the coin forces are ever going to be able to get back into there. What would they want to do? Probably want to rally to keep to keep the U.S. off out of their business. That's probably what they want to do. Yeah, because we can't do a special yet, and there's no point. I mean, passing and getting a resource would be kind of helpful, honestly, because we have four. But and we're this is but this is under assault, and we need to worry about that. And if we can play this cat and mouse game, where like I keep rallying them underground, and they have to keep sweeping. Um, they're not going to want to use a ton of air power here when there are lots of other more pressing targets to use air power on, I think. I think. So yeah, let's spend a resource to rally here. And what we're going to do is, oh, we're getting really poor. The VC, I need to start taxing again. I can only pick one space because it's limited off. So we're going to flip these guys back underground. And that way they can't just get rid of our bases or do a, a fatty little assault next turn or something if we don't get the right order of ops. Okay. Okay. Well, that's just how that is. Okay. Well, there went case on. Discard. Draw a card. Unfortunately, I just saw the U.S. goes first again. That's not super great on the next card, right? Uh, but they don't get to go on Medivac, which they probably would have liked to have taken, but honestly, they just need they need to make moves. They need to make moves. Okay, so this time the Arvin gets to go first. Yes, the Arvin gets to go first. They don't really care much about the commitment thing. That's not like a huge thing for them. I mean, they are worried about it long term, but I don't think it's enough to take the event and not do something. Uh, the shaded event is executing faction remains eligible until the coup, no airlift. Ooh. Ooh, see, that's not great. So we don't really want the NVA to get that event because they could stay eligible. It wouldn't necessarily help them here, but like staying eligible and getting like some free stuff, like, and plus having no airlift, ugh, that would be terrible right now because the US definitely needs airlift. And I think the NVA would do that. I think they would be willing to sacrifice a little tempo in order to make sure that there's no more airlift because that could be really good. Even though it's just a momentum event and then the coup card might show up. But even one airlift could, could really put the screws on them in a lot of places that maybe they don't want. So I think the Arvin cannot cannot risk having the NBA take the event. And they don't want the event themselves. So once again, we are locked into doing an op and no special activity. Oh, they would love to govern, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they love to govern? Is that something they're willing to risk? Is that something they're willing to risk? No, they got they need to get some stuff done. 
and they don't have a ton of resources, but they absolutely need to be getting things done. Okay, so what does the Arvin want to do? They've got some problems. Oh man, they need a patrol really bad. I think they could use a good patrol, but unfortunately the north is just like totally socked in. They could assault, they could also sweep. Assaulting or sweeping could be good. They only they don't have any guys here. Hmm. I need two cubes just to kill one thing on a damn route. That sucks. And I don't have anything else to pull out to put in. Hoi, unfortunately, is like under siege. I have a ton of cubes here, and we need to get them out of here. That's kind of what I need to do. And uh, I could assault here. But I only could be able to get rid of one, because that's just the way it is, right? With two guys, can't really do much. So I could assault in one space? That doesn't seem very good. That seems really bad. I think we're going to have to sweep. I mean, I could patrol. Move any Arvin cubes to or along adjacent locks or cities, stopping an insurgents, and then in each lock, activate one gorilla for each Arvin cube and the desired free assault on one lock. So patrol would let me like move guys one space, which honestly is probably what I want to do. Because we definitely want to start getting guys out of here. I could patrol out of Quinan. That leaves that open though, but there's no gorillas around it, so I'm feeling a little safer in Quinan. Oh yeah, this is one of those fun things that you're like, what am I doing? I think we're gonna patrol. Yeah, we're gonna patrol. Three resources total, that's huge. We're gonna have to spend a ton of money. Move any Arvin cubes to or along adjacent locks or cities. So to a city or along adjacent locks or cities. Stopping insurgents, okay. Any Arvin cubes. All right, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna move a guy here. We're gonna move more of these guys. I do want to leave a police and troops there. Maybe one of each. Yeah, that unfortunately, it's going to have to be how it is. So we'll move police here and here. That lets me... So we stop an insurgents, right? So I can move any of them as long as... And I can keep going, right? Two or along adjacent locks or cities stopping insurgents. Oh, it's only two or along adjacent ones. So I think the U.S. gets to, like, patrol forever. Along now... Yeah, two or along adjacent locks or cities stopping insurgents. I wonder if that means I can just like keep rolling around. Because if I can keep rolling around, then I would want to come here, but I have to stop at that insurgent. So here's what we'll do. We'll do the old shuffle game. Send two guys over there. That's how we'll make this work. There, now I feel like we just did everything legally. <laughs> cool. And that way we can start freeing up the road to Da Nang. Which I think is going to have to become like a real thing. We need to pull some guys out of here because I really do feel like we're going to need to. I got to keep a troop cube there though because we're going to need to probably move these troops up and start doing things in today. Okay. We activate gorillas. Boom. Boom. That's hot. So they can't ambush anymore. And we get to do a free assault. So we're going to free assault here on Route 1 because I need to free this route up to get to Nang like really badly. Uh, XY is sort of trapped. We don't have any air power, of course, or airlift, or otherwise I'd transport dudes around, but I can't. So we're going to do that, and it takes two cubes, and we do an assault, just to make sure we're doing that right. Any two Arvin cubes in city or lock. So it takes two. Remove one active enemy piece with any two Arvin cubes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so making sure I did that right. So goodbye. It's not much. It's not much. Did I do the three? I did not. So that goes to 14. Not much, but we are doing something that has to be done, which we should have been patrolling and kind of getting rid of these gorillas. It's getting a little out of hand. A little out of hand. All right, so mark each faction moved. All right, NVA gets a limited op. And they don't get to go first as the next card. So they're kind of doing the same thing we just had, but it's like a little flipped. What do they want to do? They probably want to rally again. Now they think they just want to rally, honestly. If we can rally, then that lets us get a base somewhere. I'd rather it have here. We get more resources if we do that, and we can improve the trail. I think that is the best thing to do. Yes, I do think that's the best thing to do. I don't. There's nowhere to really go fight yet, and um, none of the other ops seem like that great just to do one of. Like, I don't want to march anywhere. I don't want to attack. I don't want to tear anywhere, really, right now. I do just want to rally. Okay. 
Let's rally in northeast Cambodia. Well, actually, let's rally in the fishhook. Yeah, because the fishhook actually touches here, and maybe eventually we can get um, some cubes down here and then start bombarding, maybe, if they stick around that long. Cool. So we'll do that. That gives us our very important base there. That costs a resource. And then we're going to pay two more to improve the trail. Oh man, the US would really love to start bombing again. That sounds terrible, but it's true. All right, end faction play. All right, medevac, discard, draw a card. Oh boy, oh, a capability, a VC capability. They may want to pass for that. That's pretty, pretty dope to get capabilities. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's look at Blowtorch Cormor here. All right, pacification czar. We get another add aid plus 10. This could be very big for us. This support phase pacify costs one resource per step or tear. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. That could help us out so much. Oh, man. Oh, but the U.S. could really use... What's that shade? What's a shaded event? Aid minus 10, boo. Shift the space with troops and police one level towards active opposition. Losing aid is terrible right now, and that could be very crippling. And the VC would probably want to just take this event, because one VC ambush space may remove two enemy pieces. Ooh. Everything looks bleh. Honestly, though, we got to take this. I really would like to rather be doing stuff with the US. I would so much rather be, like, airlifting, airstriking, doing all that, but, like... Long term, we need to think about the fact that we're not going to have a ton of resources, and pacifying would only cost one resource per step or terror, and we can increase the aid right now, which is very, very, very big for us, very big. The Arvin is starved for resources, and we're going to need to start building these cities up. Oh, I need to get a troops cube in here really bad. Oh, God, that would just be a godsend. It would help us with the cities so bad. We need that, and could help in other places. Oh, God, play coup. Kind of needs a U.S. troop there, doesn't it? Oh, no. Is that going to be that useful for us? I know the 8 plus 10 is, like, very tempting. Otherwise, the U.S. would probably start just airstriking. <laughs> Honestly, we'd probably, like... I'd like to assault. Honestly, I'd probably like to assault. We could assault an airstrike, but we can't assault here, right? I could sweep an airstrike and probably get rid of a bunch of stuff. Oh, man, and start thinning out this or this would be huge. Oh, this is a tough choice. This is really tough. 8 plus 10 would just be just ginormous. It really would be good because the 8 is going to take a little bit of a hit with all these casualties too. 3, 6, 9 is going to take 12. The 8 is going to go down by 12 again. No, we got to take the event. I really, really need to be pressing the U.S., but the U.S. is not going to win this battle right now. And I think that event is just too good for us long term. It's not only going to help us with aid, but, like, having things only cost one is going to be to save us resources in the long term, right? Because usually it's three. Or actually it would be, yeah, be three, yeah. That's, that's unfortunate, but that's the way that goes. All right, the VC could do an op and special. They really would like to tax, but this is such a good ability too right now. They may just want that, because here's the deal. You can pass. Get a resource, which we kind of desperately need. Right? Okay. Then you're like, sweet. These guys will come back to eligible. US stays ineligible. We're going to get a nice little shake up here. All right, we got to mark this, actually. Pieces. Could do this fun little. Okay, what was that called? Those blowtorch or cormer? Maybe they did that. Do we have a piece for that? I don't know if we do. Huh. What we'll do is we will blow this guy down here. So like normally he'd be a discard. We'll just kind of keep it down here, right? So we remember that works for me. And then draw a card. All right, so. Main force battalions, that's BNS, baby. VC is definitely going to take this event. So we're going to get one VC ambush. Uh, let me remove two enemy spaces. That's going to help us because we're starting to fall a little bit behind. And this might help us really catch up. So we're going to so many capabilities getting brought up here. Oh, I forgot. I forgot that we had the Cobras. 
And a sweeper moves an active guy. But I don't think anybody was active. I wonder if... Oh. I forgot about Cobras. Oh, we might need the other one, don't we? Do I have the other one out? All right. It is entirely possible that that sweep we did here and here was actually less remove a piece. And maybe here, too. So I need to look that up. Uh, that might have to be a next game, because I hate to take time to do it, but maybe we'll just do it right now. Now you're hearing background noise. All right, I have to get the playbook out, because the playbook has all of the events. Unfortunately, I don't remember what Cobra is. I think it's alphabetized. Maybe not, though. It might be. Sorry, okay, there it is, boom. Two, in two US Arvin sweep spaces, each remove one active untunneled enemy, troops first base is last. Okay, so I'm gonna rule that as to mean I can, as soon as they go active, I can remove one, which kind of makes sense. In two spaces, I can do that. Oh, that is so big. So yeah, we'll take one away from here. So that might have changed, and eh, I don't know if that would change too much here. And then we'll take one away from here. Okay, whew, okay, caught that one. Shoo, I forgot we had Cobras. Oh no, activate, baby. Activate. Uh, that's hot. Uh, we haven't gotten to use these other ones. Oh, we've been using the Mandate for the PT. And now we're gonna add in Main Force Battalions. Just getting all sorts of great little cap I don't think I've had a game where this many capabilities have been used. All right, let's, you do, let's do one more thing, and then i got to take a break. we got to stop after this. Uh, look at our, that's our, our friends, I think, get to go next. Yep, yep, yep. It's NBA. An op and special. Now they get to do some fun things, maybe. Do they want to do another march and ambush? That could be really good. They could also bombard now. There's a bunch of cubes here. That could be really good. Do we have a bunch of cubes? Hey, look at that. There's cubes everywhere, so I think we are going to bombard. Maybe we could rally and bombard. That could be really good again. Could be really good. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to rally and bombard. Okay, because we can improve the trail again. We can start just doing damage. We can wreck house. I like all these options. I love all these options. Okay. Let's go ahead and rally in the fish hook and the parrot's beak. Let's rally in those two spaces. I kind of like to keep troops going here, so let's actually do that again. We'll rally here as well, so that's three. And then we're gonna bombard in these two places, right? Because we're right next to things with cubes, so send a casualties. And then, since we have cubes next to here, send a casualties. Oh, that's not looking good for the old US. I think we took all those eight events. Yeah, we're just, the US is really losing a lot of guys here. All right, and then we're going to rally. We're going to add it to, what is it? Bases plus trail value, I believe. One NVA gorilla replace two. Yeah, if NVA is, place NVA gorillas up to trail value plus bases, and then we can improve the trail. It's going to cost us three resources. The trail value is two, and we have two bases, so we can put four gorillas here. Oh, we're actually kind of out of gorillas, aren't we? Huh. Who would have thunk? We'll put one there, I guess. Let's bring, let's take these two. I need to start actually doing some other things with these guys. And there are other gorillas I would like to remove and replace there. Not really. I guess I could take these out in North Vietnam. I really don't care about North Vietnam getting gorillas. So we'll put another one there. I'd really like to get more troops here, but I guess I'm building up troops there. So, yeah. Do I care about this? Not really. Not really. We'll take that guy off there. Boom. So he got his three because he got two value plus that. We actually won't rally here. So we'll take back a resource. And do I want to add another one there for any reason? No, I'm pretty happy with that. Honestly, I could take it out of Central Laos too. Let's just do that, because I think Southern Laos gives us the ability to like maximize putting troops here and then moving them places, because it touches the most spaces. 
and Central Laos only touches like these two, and I just don't care as much. All right, so cool. So that's going to take us one more resource up, and then we're going to spend two to improve the trail of three. Oh boy, it's getting good here. It's getting good. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there. Boom. Oh man, so let's fit to height so we can take a look at this map. It is it is looking crazy right now. It definitely looks like the NVA and VC have just taken over this part of north uh, the northern part of southern Vietnam. Fun little phrase there. The U.S. is getting hammered, uh, but hopefully we'll get some momentum going during the coup round if it ever shows up. And yeah, the VC is like in a little precarious position because they're getting hit hard here. They lost Tay Ninh. They still haven't really solidified the Delta. But they do have Da Nang, and they got some things going on. They picked up that really powerful capability. Oh, so much going on. Okay, when we come back, it'll be more Fire in the Lake.